Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Uh, there was an interesting article in the editorial of this week's um, Boxing News by the editor Mark Butcher. And he was talking about the uh, International Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota, New York. And he was saying that it's way too sort of US-centric. In other words, fighters not from the US don't get a look in, whereas very often when it comes to the the year's ballots, um, you end up with people being nominated who, you know, who really shouldn't get in uh, um, or certainly don't deserve to be in there more than non-US fighters. And I think this might might be the case. I think this might hold some water. Now, don't forget, this is called the International Boxing Hall of Fame. So in other words, it should cover world boxing. And the example that um, Mark Butcher gave as someone who certainly shouldn't be in front of certain other fighters I'm going to mention was Vinny Pazienza. Now, if you remember Pazienza, which I do, he was a two-weight world champ. He says he was a five-weight world champ. He wasn't, unless you inc include all these very obscure ruling bodies that no one really takes seriously. Uh, but he did win the IBF lightweight title against Greg Haugen and then lost it again in the rematch. Um, and let me think now. Yes, he won the WBA light middleweight title, super world if you prefer. Uh, who was that against the Frenchman? can't remember his name offhand. But he won those two titles. And he had a lot of, you know, terrific fights, very, very exciting fights, you know, when he was um, carving a little, little niche for himself in, on the world stage. And afterwards as well, he even fought Roy Jones at super middleweight and got knocked knocked out um, almost effortlessly. I mean, it was quite that knockout of Pazienza because Pazienza had absolutely zero quit in him. He was a very exciting, extremely brave fighter, uh, but he was getting, you know, outpointed by what was left of Harold Graham right at the end of Graham's career. I think that was Graham's last victory. Uh, so, and he actually, in terms of world title fights, um, he didn't exactly have a glowing resume. I mean, he beat Roberto Duran. Did he beat him twice on points? And Roberto Duran was in his early 40s at the time. Um, but you know what? It's kind of... You're pushing it a bit because he had he had eight world title fights, recognised world title fights, and he only won two of them. Now, if you compare this to, let's say, Nigel Benn, uh, one of my favourite fighters when I was younger, followed his career from start to finish, loved every second of it. He had 16 world title fights and won 11. And his nemesis, Chris Eubank, had 24 world title fights and won 17. Now, even if you allow for the fact that certainly in the case of Eubank, a lot of those challenges were, you know, barely B minus fighters, C plus fighters. Um, to, you know, longevity must surely count for something uh, if you're making these judgments. And let's not forget Steve Collins. Uh, Steve Collins hold, held, holds two victories over both Ben and Eubank, you know, two each. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, they were at the end of Ben's career and Eubank's career, I, I get it, you know, but, but at the same time, you know, he, he went to America and he, he he was a good fighter and he and he did hold w, WBO and what was it, was it w, WBO middleweight title, which he won off Chris Pyatt and then he held a, the super middleweight belt and retired with a decent decent record. Now, if you go further than that, none of those, by the way, have been in, I don't think they've even been on the ballot. You know, they've even been nominated for for uh, the International Boxing Hall of Fame. But if you go further than that, you've got Thailand's two-time WBC flyweight king, Pong Saklek Wong Jong Kam, easy for you to say, who went 22 wins, three defeats, and two draws in world title fights. You've also got one of the great, all-time great super flyweights, Mexico's Gilberto Roman, who was nine wins, three defeats, and one draw in world title fights. 
another one that's mentioned in this article is um, Sambu Kalambe, who is a very, very underrated fighter, middleweight from uh, from the 90s, early 90s. Um, he beat Steve Collins, and he beat Mike McCallum, and he beat Iran Barkley. Nowhere to be seen in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. And also Michael Nunn, who I think has been nominated, or has been, he is actually on the ballot this year. One of the um, one of the reasons given is that he knocked out Kalambe in one round, which was a, an absolute shock. I remember that thinking that's got points written all over it, but none just caught Kalambe early and knocked him out. Well, if Kalambe is and also ran, does it matter if he's knocked out in one round by by none? But that is one of none's signature victories. So this list goes on, and. Um, you know, the argument being, well, you know, they just, is this an international boxing hall of fame or is it an American boxing hall of fame with a few, a few honorary mentions, a few visitors? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, leave your comments below because, uh, you know, I, I grew up watching American fighters. There's so many great, 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 in all weights, American fighters. Um, the history of boxing is littered with, you know, magnificent U.S. fighters. Um, I mean, Mark Butcher's article also makes a point about public perception, which may be more legend than, uh, you know, than reality. So, for example, with Pazienza, they made a film out of him, didn't they? Um, that probably contribute. Did that contribute to it to his to him being, you know, put forward for the. The Hall of Fame, I don't know, I don't know. But I, I do, do think the point about public perception is is one that, or legend, shall we say, is one that, that should be, uh, should be, you know, we should bear it in mind. Um, yeah. But let me know what you think. Um, oh, yeah, Bleed, Bleed for This was the name of the Pazienza movie, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, take a look at it. But anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Uh, maybe you're not from the US and you've got, you're from a different country, I don't know, Canada, Australia, whatever. And you might think, okay, well, why isn't so-and-so being mentioned? Why you now? Maybe you're from, I don't know, Japan, Philippines, wherever. They've got some great, great lighter-weight fighters that never get a sniff when it comes to the, the Hall of Fame. I've been to Canastota, by the way. I went there in nine, 1996. Um, and it's a great place to visit. It's very small. You know, but got some fantastic stuff in there. So it's wooden. Well, it used to be. I mean, I'm going back, I'm going back over a quarter of a century ago. But it's, it's kind of it was like this big wooden, very well kept wooden, big hut, if you like, in a, in a sort of field. I don't know. But apparently the weekends are fun to go to. So if you've been, leave your comments below as well. What did you think of it when you went there? But name some fighters who you think deserve to be in there and aren't in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. As always, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you're new because it takes a second and costs you nothing. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Thank you very much once again and bye for now.